All right, well, good morning, folks, and welcome to another day. We are exploring Nevada. That's right. I didn't say Nevada. I've been corrected on that multiple times. Peaceful night of sleep. We had uh, bighorn sheep looking down on us from up here. We had a kit fox come and visit us right here in camp and waking up to this spectacular cathedral of sandstone with the smells of bacon frying. It doesn't get much better. It'd be better if the grills were here, but it's still pretty dang good. And speaking of the girls, if you're new here, we usually travel as a family on these adventures. But this time around, I'm flying solo, since they've been visiting with family for several weeks before our spring travels begin. Thankfully, with my Starlink satellite internet setup, I've been able to stay in touch with them while on the move, and even have the ability to video chat with my wife Sarah and daughters Caroline and Abigail from camp. Yeah. With a tasty breakfast in our bellies, we took a few minutes to explore around camp and see if we could spot any of the bighorn sheep that had been our neighbors the night before. It's a area, man. It is so cool. Even for a Utahan, it's like... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. While the elusive desert inhabitants had long since departed, we were still mesmerized by the vibrant sandstone formations and even found a few additional campsites for future reference. Oh, and by the way, these points are available to our supporters on Patreon if you're ever interested in following in our tracks. With our curiosity temporarily satisfied, we hit the trail and headed towards some rumored petroglyphs, but our route got a bit questionable before we had gone very far. Since Keith was in the single rig format, he was scouting ahead to make sure there were no issues for the trailer. He had taken a more direct route up this wash, while I had swung wide trying to pick him up on the radio. From my entry point, I spotted a sign that wasn't as visible from his path and called a halt until we could decipher what it meant. I got a no motorized vehicle sign back here. We erred on the side of caution, even though the signage had us scratching our head when compared to the map and obvious travel path. Well, that was a false start. Clearly, this wash gets driven all the time. But the sign says no motorized vehicles, so no motorized vehicles it is. Unless they mean the terrain next to the wash. Yeah, man, it's so hard to tell, like, the way they have those signs posted if they mean, like, not on the rocks or if they mean not in the wash. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's a frickin' wash, man. You know, one rainstorm, it's all gone. Exactly. Nobody wants to be that one guy they finally make an example of, though. Yep, for sure. I think we later determined that the signs were indeed trying to protect the surrounding rocks and vegetation. But sadly, it appeared the locals could have cared less and had abused some of the areas behind these signs. As travelers who are passionate about our access to public lands, this blatant disregard had our blood pressure rising. We'll always have those folks who don't care, but please help us educate those who don't know. Our access is already under enough attack without adding fuel to the fire.
few miles down the trail, our route got a bit interesting as it changed from a dusty rocky wash into fluffy red sand. I had been wanting to see how the new trailer could handle a wide range of terrain, and this was exactly what I had been hoping for. It wasn't long before I had a silly grin on my face while sliding over the swells and dips. But it wasn't long until the smooth, sandy section developed some strange cross-axle corrugations that made progress creep to a halt. <laughs> These cross-axle whoops are something else. There's really no good speed because it's too tight. You can't get on top of them, so you gotta slow down. And then the trailer, because they're alternating, is just back and forth. Brutal, brutal ride. Unfortunately, it was too tight of a trail for high enough speeds to get us on top of the small oscillating waves without becoming a danger to oncoming traffic. So we just had to find the right cadence and endure the ride as best as possible without rearranging the gear too much. While we'd missed out on some petroglyphs earlier in the day with our unexpected reroute, we came upon another canyon that had been decorated with some of the most interesting designs yet in our Nevada explorations. Honestly, I could sit here for hours and stare at these etchings, trying to decipher what stories these people were trying to record. I've seen hundreds if not thousands of these works of art along our 10 years of overland travel, and it's always interesting to see almost identical petroglyph styles nearly a thousand miles apart. But every now and then, you see something truly unique that leaves you scratching your head and wondering if there really were strange creatures wandering these canyons or if these were simply recordings of visions they experienced during their dreams. I doubt we'll ever know the full story, but it's fun to attempt to unravel these mysteries. Now it was time to put the pedal down and move into a whole new region before nightfall, but it seemed there would be one more challenge before we returned to pavement. 
this hill climb over and out of the valley. I don't think the camera picked up on just how steep this climb really was, but it was steep enough for me to engage the front and rear lockers just in case. A slip and stall along this incline and the soft powdery gravel would make for a precarious situation that would not be fun to back out of with the trailer. So I used every preventative measure I had to keep that from happening. While Old Silver had no problems most of the way up, I was greeted with a few steps to climb over just before the top. Now a slip at this point would likely require all the braking possible to keep from going back down the hill. So I was ready to lock the trailer brakes in case Keith needed to jump in and winch me up the rest of the way. But with only a few spins and grunts from my trusty steed, we crested the rise without any drama. It looks like Old Silver earned herself some ethanol-free 88 octane for this performance today. Now it was time to ease down the other side, which was almost just as steep. So I maxed out the brake power to the massive 12-inch brakes on the trailer and carefully eased off the backside of the ridge to make our way to another fuel stop before diving back into the wilderness. So on this steep descent, I've got my trailer brakes maxed out. I'm manually holding back everything I've got. And then I'm just not letting it run away with me. Just nice and slow. There's not any uh, huge risk. There's no drop-offs or anything like that, which is a big plus. But I don't want to start bouncing down this hill, throwing the trailer over on its side. And then for the ascent, Silver made it look very easy, but the secret sauce is 488 gearing, factory rear locker engaged the whole way, and then ARB front locker engaged on the straightaways. I wouldn't have come up over that rock ledge if it wasn't for that front locker, I can tell you that right now. I've rarely used the front locker, but it's one of those things that when you need it, you absolutely need it. This is fun. Definitely getting a lot of stares from the locals out here. Why are you bringing a trailer on these trails? It's because it's what's made for. Woo. Progress is halted just after our fuel up. Keith's got some weird noise going on in his front right, so let's see what that is. Like suspension or what? I don't know. It's either something under here or something down here. I mean, never been uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that? Uh, it, it, it could be. Is that it yours? Be. No, this is not mine. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Problem solved oh, and free exactly. tools. Look at that. That's, <laughs> right. that's right. Free screwdriver. Yeah, that's a good oh, one, cool. too. I like fixes like that. <laughs>
after a boring section of trail that was mercifully fast, we arrived in a new area of explorations and began the arduous task of hunting for camp uh, in the dark. Camp uh, right, uh, up here to the right. Looking like either two or three. Here, we'll get out and check them out. This will work. Do pig. Do. Yes, sir. All right, tonight, keeping it simple, going through the food that I've already got open, so I'm finishing up my second pack of mushrooms, and then brother to the previous ribeye was calling my name, so ribeye again at night. And for the lettuce, I bought the bag of salad that I used on my hamburger, which I'm now gonna make into a salad tonight. So, figuring out how to do this one person cooking stuff. It's working pretty good so far. What's for dinner over here? We are doing some chicken sausages and pasta, a word that I can't pronounce, uh -huh. with pesto genovese. <laughs> so, That's good stuff. I've had that before. Yes, it's delicious. Oh, nice. Very good. Bring this sucker to Now inevitably we get a comment that says that the meat's not done until the red is gone. And that's simply not true. I grew up believing the same thing and I never really enjoyed steak until someone cooked one properly. Rocked my world. Absolutely changed my world. The red is, do some research. It's like hemoglobin or something like that. It's not blood. It's just a natural color that is present in the meat but it's fully cooked. Fun tip though, carry a digital thermometer. Don't guess on your meat. Know exactly where it needs to be. Ah, all right, cameras down, forks and knives up. I'll see you on the other side. Oh, you were wondering how the salad is? Let me tell you. It ain't steak, but it'll work. One last note, that entire meal took about eight minutes to fix. That's easy. Fire. Looks so cozy over there. Heck yeah. <laughs> With your rope lights and. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, all the comforts of home. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's what we were shooting. Mm hmm. Can't think of a better morning for biscuits and gravy. Mm -mm. All right, folks. Well, it is rest day. And yeah, you might be wondering, why do you need rest? You're just out having fun. Well, after six days of just bouncing along trail after trail, you do need some downtime. And with the rain having moved in, most of the trails are a muddy, sloppy mess. So it's a great time to hold up, let this rain pass, let things dry out a bit before we continue the adventure. So just trying to get files offloaded onto the computer, get a little bit of rough editing done, and catch up on Patreon messages and things like that. But it's been a welcome pause in this rain, falling on the canvas of the awning out there, just watching all this moodiness, all these clouds coming in and bouncing off these ridges. It's been a peaceful, peaceful day. Exactly what I needed. Hello. Can you big man? All right, folks. Well, wrapping up a lazy, relaxing, rainy camp here. And uh, as always, trying to leave a little bit better than we found it. But again, immaculate campsites so far, with the exception of this baby shark. Doot, 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 doot. So if you're missing a shark, let us know. And in addition to my usual reminder to leave things better than we found it, there's also a lot of groups out there trying to keep us out of our public lands it's something to be mindful of it's something to research there's a lot of great organizations out there to be a part of that are helping to push back on this issue one of those is uh, blue ribbon coalition you can go to sharetrails.org and sign up mostly to be informed but also to support them in their fight but you got to be active you got to notify your congress people all those that make the laws and make sure that they know that you want to keep access open all right, let's hit the trail, see what else we can get into. About ready? All set. Let's All do right. it. Let's roll. Cool. Since our lazy day at camp left us refreshed and a bit antsy to get back to exploration, we spent most of the day ranging out on foot whenever something looked interesting or if the map hinted at some oddity worth investigating. Here's just a taste of what we found. Should be right around in here somewhere. circles looks like they've done some painting in here as well yeah it's like a Joshua tree or a palm frond oh uh, yeah Thunder. He's 
you see the camera, you can you know, poke it all the way That's up true. <laughs> you guys let us know how it looks up there. <laughs> Wow. Look at us stop and see insights not just making miles. <laughs> Who says Overlander is down high? It's so unlike us. <laughs> Man. It's, I love it, it's actually. Yeah. Yeah. Man, these are probably some of the most impressive panels that I've seen yet. And they're actually pretty well preserved. But for those of you who don't know, never touch them. And definitely never try to etch your name next to them. We'll always have those who don't care, but I'm trying to change it for those who just don't know. Leave it for the future generations. According to Sean, it's an essential part of uh, a good experience. Oh, okay. So I figure we'll head over to that little Finland area and uh, find camp over there. Sound good? Sound like a plan. Doggone jets always fly over at the wrong time.
All right, folks, we have made it to camp yet again, and this is a unique spot. This is really, really cool. Went ahead and got the awning all staked down. You know me, I'm anal when it comes to awnings. I've seen crazy stuff. Had a few bit of breezes earlier today and just wanted to be ready for whatever might happen, but also want to get that rain running off the fabric and not pulling up and stretching everything out. But I don't often do this, but I've been leaving this awning out all night long and uh, it's still there when I get up. So pretty doggone impressed so far. Light her up, yo. Light her up, yo. Okay. Not too bad. Not at <laughs> all. You know, like, <laughs> this is pretty amazing. <laughs> you sit here, look at palm trees and a big rock face with cool little fingers. Yeah. I mean, because it has to be like the wind, you know, just sweeping yeah. that way. Yeah. It's just like over time just swept and created these. It's so crazy. I've never seen anything like that. That it's is so, so awesome. All right. For dinner tonight, another quick, easy meal. Just going to do some instant mashed potatoes and a little New York strip that I had set aside. Like I said before, if you have access to a vacuum sealer, this is a game changer for meal prep for your trips. You don't get stuff leaking everywhere. It lasts a lot longer. It's super handy. Extra steak seasoning just for some fun. Maybe a little over here, too. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, hold up, come back. All right. Oh, yeah, that'll do. Hot. Mmm. All right, loaded baked potatoes. Loaded mashed potatoes. Good stuff. That'll work for dessert. Let's see how these do. All right, that'll work. Got them a little bit hot. I think I saved them. Burn on the bottom, but it's all good. Delicious on the inside. It's all that matters. <laughs> all right, we'll let Keith give the final verdict. <laughs> Sounds good. Still warm. All right. Wow. <laughs> but they're good. All right. <laughs> hey, I hope you've enjoyed this ride through Nevada and its southern deserts. I'll see you next time for this adventure's finale. Until then, remember to stay curious and leave it better than you found it. And if you really love what we do here on this channel, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. Head to lso.link forward slash support to learn more about the cool bonuses our supporters have access to. Patrons, we can't thank you enough for keeping this channel fueled and rolling. Mm -hmm.